I just ran the New York City Half Marathon with six watches. Today we're going to see what the pace, the time, the duration of every watch was right here. We got the Garmin 965, the Apple Watch Ultra 2, the Garmin 165, the Coros Pace Pro, the Garmin Phoenix 8, and the Garmin 265. So let's go test the data at the lab. Thank you, Levels, for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Now this is the entire chart where I show all the watches that I wore. I had the Garmin Phoenix 8 on my left wrist, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the black titanium Milanese, Milanese loop. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the titanium Milanese loop is $899. The Coro Space Pro with the heart rate band is $349 plus $79. And then I wore the Garmin Forerunner 165 on my right forearm with padding in between. The 265 is 449 and the 165 is 249. And I also wore the Whoop 4.0 on my right bicep, which is about 239 if you buy a year long package. And it imported the start and end times from Apple Health via my Apple Watch. Now let's look at the most important variables, which is time, distance, and average pace. So my chip time was 132.19. I set a massive PR about 12 minutes from my previous half marathon best time, which is insane. And I wore it doing six watches because I'm a savage. And the closest one to that was the Garmin Phoenix 8. And that's because I started and stopped this watch at the start and the end of the just a little bit after. Somehow the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was less time than everything else. But every other watch was 133, 132, 132, high 132. It's hard to start and stop six watches at the same time. So I was like, let's use the Phoenix 8 to time my run to make sure I'm getting the right time because that's gonna upload a Strava. And then everything else, I just started slightly before and then tried to stop it as soon as possible at the end of the race. But how do they compare for distance and average pace? So a half marathon is 13.1 miles and most of the watches were about 0 0.1, 0 0.15, maybe even 0 0.2, 0 0.24 higher than the actual race distance. And when I was running, we I had a pacer, Nolene, who was helping pace, and then Michelle, who was also trying to do a sub 134, that was our goal. And we had to start in a wave that was a bit slower than what we wanted. So we were weaving in and out of people like this, going left, right, left, right. A lot of weaving, sometimes I would get blocked and I'd have to like jump to the left and then jump back to the right and then try to go forward. So that's gonna add distance and we weren't able to be perfectly in the right spot. It was very crowded, especially in the zone that we were in. So I'm expecting to have more distance. One thing that I did notice in my New York City Marathon video, if you did watch that, where I wore five watches, that's right here, I can have that link down below. The Apple Watch Ultra smooths the data. So it tends to be closer to the actual distance of the race because of the smoothing. Whereas the Garmin's are a little bit more jaggedy and they're gonna have more distance and that might be closer to the actual distance run, whereas the Apple Watch might be closer to the race distance. So once again, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was the closest, I, I think due to the Apple Maps smoothing. It was about 0.11 off the actual distance and the Phoenix 8 was the next closest at 0.16 off the actual distance. But overall, all these watches were relatively close. Like I would not sit here and say, hey, I would not wear any of these watches. Even the 165, I would wear for a race. It was close enough. Now, when it came to average pace on my actual bib, it says my average pace was 702, but every watch, almost every watch says sub seven. So it makes me look cool on Strava, but that's not the race time. So let's look at it. 702 from the bib. The Phoenix 8 gave me 658, which was published to Strava. Makes me look cooler. Upper watch watch two, seven flat. Cross pace pro 703 was the highest. I also had trouble stopping the cross pace pro at the end for some reason so that also might mean this was just higher because of that the duration was also the longest due to that the forerunner 657 658 658 so in terms of the garments they're within one second of the average the apple watch had the shortest distance so obviously that average pace is going to be higher but when it comes to measuring it for a race like no watch is going to be perfect as you can see you're going to have some discrepancies but the biggest thing I've learned is all these watches are pretty good. They're good enough to use in a race. There's no watch on this list that I'd be like, I don't know if I'd use it, but we'll dive more into the GPS data soon enough so you can kind of see when I'm on an actual map, does it miss the mark or not? And you'll be surprised by the data that you see. Now let's talk about the average heart rate and that information. So I wore a chest HRM Pro Plus that was connected to my 965 because that was on my palm and you're not gonna get good heart rate data. So I had the 965 get chest strap data and then I had the Coros Pace Pro, which was my left palm to get bicep data because anything that's on your palm is probably not gonna get very good heart rate. So that was kind of my way of saying, let's get some accurate heart rate data from other heart rate monitors for those two watches. So we're gonna say the standard was the Garmin 965. So 170 average heart rate, 181. That should be the most accurate because the chest heart rate strap is measuring electrical signals of your heart rate and it should be able to get the most accurate information for the most part and it should be the most responsive because as anything on your wrist is using light it's sending light into your skin and then the bounce back of the light is measuring that using algorithms to kind of guesstimate what your actual heart rate is and these heart rate monitors are pretty good nowadays at least the newest watches but still it's using light and optical 
sensors and algorithms to guess it versus this is using an electrical signal to actually measure your heart beating. So if we say that the 965 had the most accurate, anything close to 170, it looks like the 265 and the 165, the cheapest watches on here, where the Phoenix 8 was close in terms of average, the max was a bit low. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 somehow got 190 as the max, and the Core Space Pro was a bit lower for both of them, even though it was a bicep band. I'm guessing because the 265 and the 165 were on my forearms, they were just able to get the best data because they were tight on my forearm. The higher up it is on your arm, the less movement, and these watches are lighter, so that's probably why they got the most accurate data. And then the Core Space Pro, I don't know why with the armband on my bicep, it just didn't do as well. The Apple Watch, I get. The titanium Milanese loop here did loosen up a little bit during the race. Sometimes it just has, it just doesn't fit as well. And it just wiggles a little bit more. I try to tighten as much as possible, but I don't think this is the best band for the most accurate heart rate data. I would use more of a sport band, something that you can just get tighter, like the trail loop. So maybe I'll test that in the London Marathon. I'm gonna be doing this again at London, so comment below what watches you want me to do there. The Phoenix 8 Pro max heart rate was just one, two beats off. That wasn't moving around as much. I expect the heart rate to be decent. So I was, I was surprised. It did pretty well. We'll dive deeper into the actual heart rate data over a period of time as well at the end. Elevation on Google, it said that the New York City half marathon is about 499 feet of elevation. And most of the watches were pretty close. 492, 485, 525, a bit high on the Pace Pro. 502, 515, 492, relatively close. Apple Watch was the lowest. I think the Garmin 400 965 got the closest. Active calories, most of them relatively close. Standouts, Apple Watch Ultra 2, which showed 200 more calories, total calories than most of the other watches. In general, the Coast Pace Pro was also relatively high. Running power, most of them were around 400, 500. Somewhat close. Cadence, all relatively close, except the 265 showed a 200 cadence, whereas everyone else was in the 175 range. Vertical oscillation, everyone's relatively close again, but 965 had a 7.3 centimeter, whereas most of them were 9.2 or 10.2. Ground contact time, everyone relatively close, except the Apple Watch Ultra 2 at 217. Stride length, everyone was pretty spot on, very similar. And then aerobic, anaerobic. And lastly, sweat loss from the Garmin's around 1500 milliliters of sweat loss. Now, top secret, I I actually have a goal to run a sub three hour marathon this year. And one of the ways that I want to do that is to lose about 15 pounds of body weight while maintaining muscle mass. I love technology that drives actual behavior change and Lovells does exactly that. So I really need to track my macros and how many calories I'm eating. And I need something that's effortless because I am lazy and I've always used the Levels app, which is the sponsor of this video, to track my glucose levels in real time and compare it with what I eat. And Levels offers food AI logging because I'm lazy and I can never type in the food. I can just snap a photo of my meal. It automatically creates the macros. It logs the calories and it connects that data to my continuous glucose monitor right here. Now, if you're not a photo person, you can also describe what you're eating or scan barcodes. So there's literally no excuses to track your food. I track my glucose levels with a continuous glucose monitor, which then integrates this data into the Levels app, and I can see how my sleep, my nutrition, my exercise impacts my glucose levels. So specifically for marathon training, when I'm running, doing these longer runs, I wanna make sure that I'm maintaining a rel relatively high-ish glucose level. So that means taking gels, goose, whatever it is. And if I'm not taking enough, I will see that number drop. So after every long run, I will look at the data again and be like, hey, did I take enough or did I take too much, too little? And I will adjust accordingly. So that way, when I come to marathon day, I'm prepped and I'm not gonna bonk, I'm not gonna get tired. I've been using Levels for the past few years and it's been one of my favorite apps around nutrition. So if you wanna start tracking your meals, getting real-time glucose data, go click the link in my description. I wanna thank Levels again for sponsoring this video. Now, let's go from CGM data to GPS data. So I'm using a platform from DC Rainmaker where I can input the fit files for all of the watches into here and we can compare it via the, the graphs. I will have a link down below if you want to look at this in more detail. But we'll start first start with heart rate and compare the heart rate. So the Garmin Forerunner 965 was connected to the HRM Pro Plus. That is a chest heart rate strap, so that will supposedly have the most accurate heart rate data. So the red is most accurate. Black is the Apple Watch Ultra 2. And the green, dark green, are the forerunners, 265 and 165, which are on my forearms. The bright green is the Phoenix 8. And then the blue is the Coral Space Pro with the heart rate band on my bicep. So even if we look here, the Phoenix 8, for some reason, at the beginning, was a little bit off of the group. The Apple Watch Ultra, for some reason, I think the Titanium Milanese loop band is not the best. I tried to tighten it as much as I could. And then the Coral Space Pro, even with that bicep armband, like here, what happened with Coros? 
it jumped way below, whereas all the Garmin's were pretty close to the heart rate strap. That red line is the master line. And then the Coro Space Bar has some issues stopping it near the end. So, but I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 with this band, I wouldn't run a marathon if you want to get good data with this band. I'd try a different band. Cadence, we can see this data here. Speed, you can kind of see the graphs here. You can dive into detail, the distance, elevation. You can see for the most part, they're relatively close, but there were some discrepancies in terms of the baseline values. But when it comes to the overall trend, they all trended in the same direction. We have a whole bunch of developer fields. Device battery charge. So what about battery? All right, this is the Garmin 265. It looks like we went from 100% to 89%, so 11% battery loss on the Garmin 265. Garmin Phoenix 8, we went from 100% to 97%. So we lost 3% of battery on the Garmin Phoenix 8. Coros Pace Pro, 94%. 94%, so we lost 6% on the Coros Pace Pro. Garmin 965, Garmin 965, we lost 7%. 7% on the Garmin 965. Apple Watch Ultra, we lost 18%. 18% on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. With it on airplane mode, 165. Garmin 165, we got 89%. Garmin 165 lost 11% of battery on a half marathon. From a battery perspective, the winner was the Phoenix 8, which only lost 3% of battery, and the loser was the Apple Watch Ultra 2, which <coughs> lost 18% of battery. But I think both of them, all of these watches, will survive a half marathon. And if you just double that, it's definitely a full marathon. Way more, that's only like, what, 20, 40% loss on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, so you can maybe get through the day as well. So all these watches will survive a full marathon. And now let's dive into the maps the actual data on the course. How close did it match up to the information that we wanted? So here we are with the maps. So this is the New York City Half Marathon. It starts in Brooklyn near Prospect Park and then goes into Central Park. This is the start line. You can see I started the watches a bit early. So the Phoenix 8 started here. The other watches I try to start as soon as possible as we're walking down the corral. And once again, all of these watches, like we saw the total distance was relatively close. They're all sticking pretty well. One interesting thing is when you notice, depending on which side I wear the watches on, if it's on the right side or the left side, I will notice on the map here that you can see the right side watches will be a little bit more to the right, like here, Apple Watch Ultra 2. We got the 965 and the 165. Yep, those were all on my right arm. And then we have the Phoenix 8, which is on the left side. The 265 and the Core Space Pro show slightly towards the left. So that will be a common trend. Depending on which arm you wear your watch on, it's going to be slightly to the left or slightly to the right. Not a big difference, but it looks like the Phoenix 8 stayed on the road. The other watches were a bit wobbly. And you can even see the smoothing that happens with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. This black line is smooth, whereas this darker green line, it's like a sharp boom, sharp, sharp change. So because of that, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is going to show a shorter overall distance versus some of the garments, which don't have that smoothing. And as we go around this map, we can see it cuts corners. The Phoenix 8, for some reason, cut the corner even more than all the other watches in this specific area. But generally speaking, all of these were relatively close, relatively close. They all stayed together. The Phoenix 8 is the only one that's jumping off a little bit. Everyone else, pretty close. We're still all very close. If you zoom out, like it's not a big difference. We keep going, no big changes here. Even, even well, there's some tall buildings, maybe not too many in the city center. They all did pretty well. There's some moments, maybe there's a tall building here where they all separated a little bit, pretty close. The, honestly, the Apple Watch, you can see it right here, the smoothing. Look at that. That's a very smooth trend around the street, but I did run through the street, whereas everyone else has a bit more jaggedyness to it. And I think it's, it's the smoothing from the Apple Maps data. So that will just sometimes give you a shorter distance, even though you might have ran a little bit more. The bridge, everything looks good. The Phoenix 8 seems to be separating from the gang a little bit, but everyone's very close, right? Even the 165 was doing very well. We are on FDR now. I think it's nice because here you, you have pretty good view of the sky. It was a cloudy day, which could impede GPS signals a little bit, but for the most part, all the watches were set to most accurate, whatever is the most accurate or better accuracy on their settings. The Phoenix 8, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 have multi-band, the 965 does as well. So the 265 has multi-band, whereas the 165 does not. And it didn't show a drastic change. All right, now we are entered into New York City. We're getting close to Times Square. The buildings are getting taller and the GPS tracks are separating a little bit more. But once again, they're all close enough. Like, yeah, we're running into buildings here with the yellow, this yellow again. Yellow is the 165, right? It doesn't have multi-band, so it might struggle a bit more. But even the Phoenix 8, the Forerunner 965, the 265, right? They all have their moments where they jump out a little bit. We're going up 7th Ave here in New York City. Central Park has pretty good views of the sky, so it smooths out again. But here, look at that. Apple Watch Ultra 2 feels like an exact straight line. There is no curves, nothing. Just a straight line. Sharp turn, straight line. 
Whereas all the other GPS tracks, there is a little bit of movement, a little up and down. The 165 seemed to struggle the most in these areas, but it was still good enough. It did add extra distance because of that struggling. And then we come through Central Park and we finish. So it looks like from a general perspective, the 165 is the only watch that struggled just a little bit and the Phoenix ate a little bit, which added extra distance and the Foreigner 965 as well. But the 265 didn't seem to pop out a lot. The Apple Watch Archer 2 did have a lot of smoothing. But generally speaking, all three of these watches got pretty good data. But in terms of which watch would I buy and use during a race, honestly, any of these, the 165, the 265, the 965 Forerunners are all relatively good. The Pace Pro, relatively good. Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Phoenix 8, also good, but much more expensive. So if you're trying to save money, honestly, that $250 165 seems to be pretty good. I would buy that if you just want a watch that works and you want to save money. I do have the Garmin 455, which I didn't have space to put it on, but I think I'll wear this in London because this is even cheaper. But if you want the best of the best, personally, I use the Phoenix 8 because it's just easy to start stop like most Garmin's, whereas the Apple Watch Ultra had had a bit of issues with like an orange screen that pops up and doesn't actually start the run. I was just stuck with that as my main watch for running purposes when I know I need a good start stop and the heart rate data is close enough but when you're paying so much like why not just wear the 165 and just wear it higher up the distance might be a little bit more accurate on the phoenix 8 but honestly i would probably wear the 165 if that was my main watch just save your money like it's 1200 you could buy four garmin 400 165s and on that day the temperature was 52 degrees fahrenheit eight miles per hour of south south winds and 86 percent humidity humidity was very high it was a good day very cloudy you couldn't see much but did well i would wear any of these in a race i think that's my biggest takeaway when it comes to the heart rate data i'd probably want to just wear a chest strap or really put the watch higher up on my forearm and tighten it smaller lighter watches are going to have better heart rate accuracy it seems like at least from the newest models so i'll rerun this test at the london marathon in 2025 comment it below or if you see someone else comment it just hit the thumbs up Whatever ranks at the top in the comments, those are the watches I will wear. Once again, this video was sponsored by Levels Health. If you want to track your glucose levels, your nutrition, all within the app using their special AI algorithms, go check out the link down below. I've been wearing Levels for multiple years now, and it's helped me so much. So thanks again, Levels, for sponsoring this video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.